In this video, we begin discussing working with functions in terms of algebraic expressions. Now, in the past, we could have had something like this. y equals 3x minus 7. And if I gave you a value of x, I said, um, you know, find, find y when x equals 8, right? That was simple enough. You would just take that value of 8 and you would replace that x with 8. And it would just look something like this, right? And you work this out. 24 minus 7, and you get that y is equal to 17. That's how we would do an evaluation, right? You plug in the x, you get out the y. Well, here's the big thing that going forward. Know that y is the same thing as saying f of x. So please don't read this as fx, that, FX, that sounds ridiculous. This is read as f of x. So y and f of x are now going to be interchangeable for us. So instead of writing y equals 3x minus 7, you'll see something like this. You'll see f of x is equal to 3x minus 7. And so by saying it this way, f is the name of the function and this x tells you the variable that it's connected to right so instead of saying you know find y when x equals 8 you're going to see instructions that say this the instructions will say to evaluate f of 8 and what that means is that it says find the function who's called f this guy and plug in 8 so it means instead of seeing x, you're now going to see the x as 8 because that's what it's saying. It says replace the x with 8. So you would write it like this. You would say f of 8 equals. Now at this point, x is gone. x has been replaced with 8. So we use parentheses everywhere we see x. And you would now plug in this input value of 8. And again, you just work it out the same way we did up above and we come to this answer, 17. So what does it mean to evaluate f of 8? Well, this means that f of 8 is equal to 17. So to make sure we understand, this is basically our x, which is going to be our input value. And this number here is really our y value. So if you were making an ordered pair, uh, you can clearly see your x and your y. So x is your input, y is your output. And so what this means, if we were to go just a little bit further here, that means that you would have the ordered pair 8, 17. So that would be one of the points on this function f of x equals 3x minus 7. And we can plug in any value that we want to. Uh, maybe another way of looking at this is that this is a formula. This is a formula that says any value of x that you give this guy, here's what he's going to do with it. You're going to do 3 times x and subtract 7. It's a formula. It's a function. Now, since it is a function, going back to the discussion we had earlier, with a function, each input value is going to have just one output value. You plug in one number, you get out one number. That's what it means to be a function. You go to a vending machine, you press one button, you get out one item, right? If you press that same button again, you should get the same item if this really is a function, right? It'd be really horrible to go up to a vending machine, put your money in, and press a certain button combination because you're hoping to get those spicy hot Cheetos, but instead, it gives you M&Ms. I mean, that's, that's not what you want. You don't want chocolate. You want those flaming hot Cheetos burning at your tongue, right? So functions, you plug in one value, you get out one value, right? And so if I were to plug 8 into this guy again, I'm still going to get 17. So this is oftentimes the notation we see. Instead of saying y equals, we'll say f of x. It doesn't just have to be f. Um, sometimes we use things like this. We might say c of x. And c of x may be something like this, 100x plus 3,500. And maybe this C is talking about cost. So this could be an example of a cost function. 
where the cost of manufacturing something is going to be based on this formula. So if you want to make, say, you know, 25 items, you would do 100 times 25 plus 3,500 for however that's defined, right? Uh, sometimes we have this. We might use h of t, and maybe that looks like this. So negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 96. And this function can be describing the height of an object t seconds after it's been tossed into the air, right? So we know at every single point in time, there's only going to be one location, one you know, distance from the ground up to that object. So it's going to be a function. And so sometimes we use h so that we really see that, okay, we're talking about the height based on time, t, uh, cost, c, based on some unknown number of items that we're making uh, represented by x. So it's not always just f and x. Sometimes you use different letters. The most common letters you're going to use for your functions will be f, g, and h. Okay. So what we want to do next is we want to take some, some different functions at different f and just evaluate, just so we make sure we understand how to evaluate, and then we'll hit the homework.